Y'all, Wayne took us through the stages with this goddamn album. Yo, we literally cared, not cared, kind of gave a fuck, forgot about the shit, remembered for a hot minute, lost our hope, got a little bit back, got lied to 78 times about when it's going to drop, and then we finally get the shit, and honestly, I don't even know how to feel no more. It's, it's just here. I'm going to still listen to the shit, though. What's going on, everybody? It's the granddad of granddad, Wooly, and you are here again for another edition of Wooly Reviews, Hip Hop Data. We got an album review today. We're going to talk about the brand new album that just fucking dropped that really ain't new, y'all. We know goddamn well this shit been sitting around for a good five years, minimum, at least five years this shit's been there. But it's all good. It's new to us, kind of, sort of, because we've been waiting to hear this shit. It's from one of the legends in the game, one of the quote-unquote goats of the game, arguably, and now he's finally back with the shit we've been waiting for fucking forever. This nigga's back. He dropped this old new shit. We gonna talk about it. Talk about the new old album from Lil Wayne entitled The Carter Five. Finally, nigga, shit. Birdman finally got you free from that shit. Like, see, that's why I don't sign record deals. They don't want me anyway, but I'm saying if they did, I wouldn't sign them. Fuck them. Now, we all know who Lil Wayne is, y'all. Wheezy F Baby, Lil Tunchy, Birdman Jr., probably dropped that one. He's probably not fucking with that one no more. But all good. He's been around for a long time. He's got a lot of dope albums under his belt. He's more notably known for his Carter series, Carter 1, Carter 2, which is my favorite, Carter 3, which is what made him a super, superstar. And then he dropped Carter 4, which was, you know, it, it was there. And that's when the whole shit just started to go bad. Like, and then after that, we were supposed to get Carter 5 in like 2012. That shit ain't happened. And from now, we got pushbacks and letdowns and lies and a whole bunch of bullshit. Nobody was getting paid, all that shit. And it's just, it got messy, y'all. It got real fucking messy. But now, everything is all good. Motherfuckers got their money. And motherfuckers got their music. Rights are all right. And now, it's all about Lil Wayne. He's fully independent. Young money's under his belt. And he can finally drop whatever the fuck he wants. And the first thing he dropped, of course, was this motherfucker. So now, let's see if the Carter 5 is the album that solidifies him as one of the ghosts and is the album that we've been waiting for. Or if it's five years too late. Actually, it's more than that. It's like six years. out. What, 2012? 28 you're a long ways away hopefully this shit still sounds good hopefully it ain't aged like a prune hopefully it's like a fine wine if you get what i'm saying let's talk about the shit now when i first popped in this album and i tuned into the production i quickly realized that wayne's been sitting on these songs for a minute y'all like some of these songs on this album you can tell have been done years ago like they got a little bit of a 2013 14 15 feel to them but some beats on here as well have a very up-to-date sound and an up-to-date aesthetic so it's sort of like a mixed blend bag with the production now the beats on here for the most part are pretty good there are some that are just okay to man but then there are some that are really really dope that i did enjoy but for the most part you can tell that wayne just kind of compiled all these songs he's been sitting on and gave us just a massive amount of music there's a lot of songs on here y'all there's like 23 tracks on here i believe it's over an hour long and wayne i think because it's just been so long since we got a wayne project and we've been waiting for the carter five he just wanted to just give us as much music as he can which could be a good thing or a bad thing depending on who you ask but to me i think as far as the production is concerned it's just like it's a mixed bag you got some dope beats you got some beats that are not so dope or just that don't sound up to date or they sound like they were made a few years back when they probably would have been a lot more hot than they are now and when it comes to the actual producers on here he got a lot of motherfuckers on here but he got some notable names hold on let me get i thought i had it but i didn't but i do here we go so we got 808 ray ace harris rio ben billions cool and dre dj mustard freeway tj infamous johnny yukon camo louis hayes man and fresh all right man and fresh uh metro Boomin, mike free miles william now, damn, that's a lot of producers, nigga. Shit. O'Neal, Prin Prince85, Reefa, you're smoking, nigga? Okay. Rockin' Main, Sham, Sack Passe, Joseph? Okay, Seven Thomas, Swiss Beat, Swizzy, and uh, Thomas Trollson, Zen, and Zaytoven. Nigga, you got enough producers on your shit? Wayne, fuck, nigga. Damn. Okay, and they all come through, like I said. And overall, it's solid, but it's just, you know, like I said, some beats here are really, really dope, and some of them just aren't as dope as they probably could have been if they came out the year that they were probably made or when, like, the sound was that sound at the time. But, you know, it's all right overall. I mean, I didn't hate the production, but also I didn't love it overall. I wasn't going crazy over all the beats. Some of them on this album were just very basic and blah, and then some were just, like I said, very dated, but then there were other beats on here that I really, really did enjoy. But for the most part, the production is what it is, and I kind of expected that with this album being so pushed back and so, like, anticipated for so many years that some of the songs on here would be not made this year. There would be songs that he's been holding on to 
for a long, long time. And when it comes to Wayne himself, everybody knows Wayne is a master lyricist when he wants to be. Like sometimes Wayne don't say some questionable shit, like, like Wayne really, but then when Wayne is on, he is fucking on. And I gotta say throughout this album, he really does a great job. There are some moments on here where Wayne really goes in and just fucking kills it. And then there are some moments where Wayne does a little sing-songy shit. He does his auto crooning shit. He does some shit where he just, you know, kind of just like plays around and whatnot. He's not really taking it full force seriously. But like I said, there are some tracks on here where Wayne does not fucking around. He has that crazy wordplay. He has those clever lines and the funny lines. And he just does what Wayne does, which shows that why he is one of the best in the game still. And he still has it after all these years. So just like with the beats, it's a mixed bag with Wayne. There are some songs on here where you're like, yo, Wayne killed that shit. And then there are some songs where you're like, Wayne, no, nigga, this ain't this. You in the wrong gear for that shit, nigga. You peel it back. Scale it back. No, nigga, trash can. Don't need that no more. So it just really depends on what song it is. Like, some people are going to like certain songs and some people are going to like other songs. But I highly, highly doubt everybody's going to love every song on this album. If you're going to sit here and say you love every freaking song on this album, you a goddamn liar because it's just so varied and mixed bag and different era. It's like, unless you're just a Wayne stan and you just couldn't wait for Wayne to drop this shit so your mind is telling you to love everything. But if you really sit and listen to this shit, I honestly doubt that you're going to sit here and say you love every freaking song that's on this goddamn album because if you do, you're a liar. You're a fucking liar. And when it comes to the features on the album, it's the same thing. It's a mixed bag. There are some features on here that I thought really, really worked out well. And there are some features that I thought Wayne could have completely did without and just they brought nothing to the album. So he has uh, XXXTentacion, Travis Scott, Nicki Minaj, Kendrick Lamar, Snoop Dogg, Ashanti, Mac Main and Nivea on the album, as well as his mother. She, she does some uh, narrations in the beginning and in the middle and some parts of the album as well. So she's also on there. And I believe Regine Carter, which I think is his daughter, or maybe that's his mom. So it says Regine Carter as well. But that's who's on the album. And honestly, y'all, like I said, some features on here are fucking amazing. Kendrick on here is fucking amazing. I like Snoop Dogg on here as well. Also, I like Travis Scott, surprisingly, his feature with Wayne. They work well together. But then there are also features on here that just don't work out well for me, like the beginning track, uh, Don't Cry, that has XSX and Tassian, RIP to him, but I just, I never really felt X's music anyway, but I just, I mean, I just didn't really gel with that song, as well as Ashanti and Nivea. Don't get me wrong, they're fine. Ashanti is fine as fuck. You seen her these days? Goddamn. But like the song just seems very dated that they're on. And Nivea, like I thought she died. No, no disrespect. I, she's still around doing shit. Like I thought that was lotion at these days. I mean, you know, the, the Nivea lotion is nice and smooth. I'm just saying. But the point is this. Like, those songs right there sound very like, you know, those songs probably were made a long time ago. And even the, the Nicki Minaj feature, even though Nicki's doing some singing, it's just like the song itself is just meh. So it's like some of the features are like, yeah, and some of the features are like, nah, fam. And that's what it is with these features, just like with everything else on this album. It's just, you know, it is what it is. It's just like, you know, you know you're going to get a mixed bag, and there's a lot more bad in the mixed bag than good for me. Now, you know I got to give him a top five track, y'all, and this wasn't hard at all to find my top five, y'all, because honestly, there was like some songs on here that I said they shouldn't even been on the goddamn track list and some that, you know, were really, really dope that, yeah, they needed to be on there for sure. So my top five are, hold on, hold on, Uproar, Let It Fly, Can't Be Broken, uh, Mona Lisa, and then it's, uh, hold on, the, the last track, uh, Let It All Work Out. So yeah, those are my top five. And let me go back to the top. So Uproar, Uproar I like a lot, mostly because of the beat. Swiss Beats does it, but it's basically the special delivery beat from GDEP. I love that fucking beat, yo. I've been wearing the Harlem Shake and shit. I ain't gonna do it here, because you know, I ain't, I ain't got to, I, you know, I'm not doing it. I'm not gonna fucking do it. But the point is this, the beat is dope. I love how they flip the special delivery. So that kind of had a soft spot, because like, I fuck with that. That remix shit was still a legendary joint. But, like, Wayne goes and does his own thing with it. He does a lot of clever wordplay. I mean, it's gonna be a hit song. I think they already got a fucking challenge on Instagram for this shit. That shit took no time at all to get a challenge for that shit. So with the dope ass song, great energy, and it was really the first song on the album that really woke me up. At first when it started off, I was like, meh, meh, but when that shit came on, I was like, okay, now we're getting into some shit. So it's a dope song, good energy, Swiss Beats is on there screaming and yelling and saying this shit that he always says, but you know, I fuck with Swiss, so it's cool. He a cool dude, I actually met him before, he's a cool ass dude. But uh, yeah, it's a dope song, definitely check it out. And you probably have already heard it all over goddamn Instagram anyway, but yeah, it's fire. The next song, Let It Fly, featuring Travis Scott, is one I'm actually surprised that I like so much because I'm not a big Travis Scott fan. But I do have to be honest, Travis Scott and Lil Wayne work perfectly together. Their chemistry sounds 
perfect. And this song right here is the perfect song. It doesn't sound dated at all. It sounds like something that could have been on a Travis Scott album or a Lil Wayne album. They're very interchangeable. The beat on here is very, very like eerie and dark, but very ominous. And it works out well for Travis Scott's voice for Lil Wayne's voice, the rapping on here is on point, and it's just really a good hook on there as well, and I really enjoyed this, and Lil Wayne snapped at the end of it. Like He was like, yo, free your mind. I, I can't even get, he, he was taking the same word, the word mind, and he was just like doing these acrobatic, lyrical shit with it, where he was just completely kept flipping it. He was like, free your mind, in your mind, change my mind, clothing line, in the line. Like he was just kept, he just kept going and going and going, but the way he was doing it and bouncing on the beat, Woo, Lil Wayne was killing it. So at that point, I was like, yeah, Wayne still got it. And it just showed his charm and his ability and just why we grew to love Wayne because he just gives a shit like that. So that's a dope record. He killed it. Travis Scott did his damn thing. Really a strong song. One of the strongest on the album, hands down. The next song, Can't Be Broken, is a dope song as well. I love the beat on here. Very, very eerie, but I love the sample chop that they got in there where it's like, can't be broken. Like, I just love how that's chopped up in there and it really just brings the whole song together. And Lil Wayne's pretty much talking about no matter what he goes through, he can't be broken. No matter what you do to him, the ups and downs, the shit he's went through, whether it's with just his personal life, his relationships, with the shit with cash money and the music, no matter what it is, nothing can break him. And he just went through all the bullshit and he's persevered and he is at the point where he's at now because he wasn't been able to be broken. I love the song. I love the theme of it. Lil Wayne is doing his thing on it. He's killing it and the beat is fire. So definitely a standout. And this is like the strongest stretch of the album to me, y'all. Like from Uproar all the way up to here. Like these, this three song stretch was probably the strongest stretch to me. Well, actually going a little bit further too. But uh, yo, it's, it's, it's really when the album started to really pick up for me. My next song, Mona Lisa, is probably my favorite song on the album. It features Kendrick Lamar. And this is the song that everybody pretty much was anticipating anticipated by because when you get Wayne and Kendrick together, you know it's going to be some lyrical craziness. But instead of them just going bars, 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 they actually gave us a concept track, which is really dope. The beat on here is really like dark and gritty. But what I love is it's about how Wayne is this dude who has these girls who are like hook up with these like rappers and ball players, these rich motherfuckers. He has the girls like get to know them and find out shit about them. And then eventually Wayne and his goons catch this motherfucker slipping and take all this shit and take all their shit and ends up robbing them. And basically, Kendrick's role is the role of the sucker who's pretty much like in love with this girl. He does all this shit with them and finds out that she's fucking with Wayne. And there's this huge ass conversation that goes on and both verses are on point. Wayne's killing it. Uh, Kendrick's killing it. Even though he sound like he about to cry, that motherfucker probably cried in the car. Like, this fucking voice was like super like, I'm about to cry. He fucking was hurt. I think he came from a real place with that shit. But you can also tell that this was probably done around the good kid Matt City maybe to Pimp a Butterfly days because it doesn't sound like Kendrick does now but it still sounds dope and Wayne has some really dope lines on here where he's like yo you thought she was an angel but I'm playing frisbee with her halo where he was in the house waiting for the, the dude to slip up and you know he was like she gave you a French kiss so he didn't see moi or like me which is dope and then Kendrick had a really funny line where like he was like confronting the girl he was like yo are you fucking with Wayne she's like no I gotta get this phone and then like the ringtone is Lil Wayne and the motherfucker sound like he was about to cry like for real though and it's just hilarious that fucking line but this is a dope ass song definitely one of the standouts Kendrick and Wayne both killed it and I love just this whole theme and the whole concept and the shit's real I wouldn't know though because I'm not rich yet so when I get rich and I you know maybe I'm not fucking with nobody I'm scared of all chicks if I'm rich like nobody wanted me now don't want me when I'm rich Fuck it. And the last song, Let It All Work Out, which is the closer of the album, is very dope. I love the beat on here. It's actually a sample sample from the song Indecision that they throw in there, which really works out well. And it's pretty much Wayne just talking about how everything just ended up working out. He even goes into detail about the time that he shot himself in the chest with his own gun. And he tells about the whole situation with that and how that happened, as well as some other events. And how pretty much out of everything, he should have barely been dead like 10 times at this point of his life. But it all worked out, and he's still here, and he's still doing his thing, and it's just a great way to close out the album. There's a whole bunch of bullshit songs leading up to that point, but it is a very strong closeout, so I like it. But I wish, like, you know, it could have just, you know, been, like, you know, in between some good shit, but, like, you know, you got to go through some bullshit to get to the good shit of the closing of the album. But those are my top five, y'all. But honestly, like I said, this is a mixed bag of an album. Those are my favorite songs, but then there are a lot of songs on here, y'all, that just could have just, I, they, we didn't need them. Like, the song, like, I didn't, like, Dedicate. I didn't, like, like, Dark Side of the Moon was, like, meh. Uh, what else? Uh, fuck. What else? Uh, uh Problems was in. Uh, uh, shit. Uh, maybe, uh, Hitters. Uh, like, Took His Time. Open Safe. 
uh, start this shit off right. No, I, I thought Lil Duval was gonna come in with that shit. Uh, Demon, which I thought would have been dope, which was eh. mess, was a mess. Uh, dope new gospel, like all the, that whole stretch of the last half of Perfect Strangers, like all of them joints are just like I, I could have did without that shit if like Wayne really condensed this album down to a good. 12 to 15 song album with the strongest joints. It would have came off a lot better. It's honestly in the lineage of the Carter series. This is probably the second to worst, if not the worst Carter. Like to me, it goes Carter two, Carter three, Carter one, and then I don't know what's worse, this or Carter four. I was still, I think Carter four edges this one out still because at least Carter four, I didn't care for that one. It had like more songs I enjoyed than this one. So this is probably the worst Carter album. It's not a terrible album by any stretch of the imagination, but in the lineage of what the Carter saga is, this is probably the weakest one without a doubt. And I know I'm gonna get some Wayne Sands like, fuck you, Granddad. You don't know what the fuck you talk about. This shit is fire, nigga. It's not. It's not fire. It's not completely whack, but it's not fire. It's not the best Wayne album. You cannot tell me that this shit's better than the Carter 2 or the Carter 3. You a goddamn liar. There's no way this is album of the year. That's a Lupe. There's no way this is the album of the year. Not even close. It's a very, very decent, okay album with some great moments and some not great moments and a big mixed bag of songs that were made probably between the year of 2011 all the way up to 2018. And Wayne just picked the ones that he liked the most, I guess. And that's what it is. But like the Carter 5, I mean, I think, I think the anticipation of it I mean, really soured it because we waited so long for this album, and now that we finally got it, the hype for it was so high, I don't think Wayne could have done anything to really, like, solidify that amount of hype without making a brand new Carter, but he probably didn't want to do that because it would have been a lot of work, and he probably was just emotionally tied to these records, which I can understand. So we got what we got. It's an okay album. I didn't expect it to blow my mind, but I did hope for it to be a lot better than what it was. But you know what? It is what it is. Now we can stop complaining about it. It's here, and then that's what it is. So my final verdict, I'm not saying that the Carter 5 is an overall okay, mad album with some good songs and some not-so-good songs, as well as good production, not good production, and good features, and not good features. All I'm saying is that it's a mixed bag album, y'all. It's like you're going to get some shit you like, and you're going to get some shit you don't like. And if you like everything, you a fucking liar, or you a stan, one or the other, because there's no way with the, the, the wide range of the amounts of songs on the albums with 23 tracks that you're gonna love everything Wayne did on here because it's so different so many different themes and aspects to it he gave you something that everybody who's a Wayne fan is gonna like but it's just not a consistent album it's not cohesive really and you can just tell it's a compiled album of a whole bunch of shit he's just been sitting on some of it sounds more recent than others but overall it's just a mad album that I'm probably not gonna go back to other than my favorite five songs everything else I really could care less about. So all I gotta say is that for me, Lil Wayne, the Carter Five is not granddad approved, but I will give it a granddad recommended. But now that he's got Carter Five out the way, finally y'all, now we can see what he's gonna do after this because like he said, this was gonna be his last album. I'm not too sure if that's still the case. I would like to see another Wayne album with more up-to-date production, up-to-date rapping, and just songs that feel more like in this current era. And it's, I mean, like if he continues to work on albums and do music, hopefully we'll get something soon. But if this is gonna be it, I mean, it's kind of lackluster in a way, but I mean, I think Wayne at least can give us one more album to kind of really put a feather in the cap and show us why he is, quote unquote, one of the best rappers alive, if not the best rapper alive. But you know what? We got Carter 5, y'all. That's all we can hope for that, like, you know, we get something else after this. But if not, at least we got this shit. But I got nothing more to say. Carter 5 is granddad recommended, so go listen to the shit. I'm pretty sure you already have, but if you haven't, go ahead. But don't expect a classic, because that it is not at all. Flip it. All right, y'all, that's going to do it for today's video. Make sure you give me a thumbs up and drop a comment. Tell me what you think of Lil Wayne and the Carter 5. If you heard it, if you have not heard it, like I said, mixed bag album, some good joints, some not so good joints. Some people going to love it. Some people going to hate it. Some people going to be in the middle. It's one of them albums, but it is what it is. And Wayne finally was able to give it to us so we can be happy about that. But now I want to see what Wayne does after this because I think he has another great album in the tank. We just got to get that out of that motherfucker. Previous videos on the side as well as my latest single. Check that out. Show us some love. And as always, Twitter, Facebook, SoundCloud, Instagram. Links in the description below. And subscribe. Button on the screen. Button below. Wooly reviews twice a week as well as the gaming videos. Spider-Man gameplays on that ass. As well as let's talk about the shit. All the other info below. Hit the notification bell so you know when I drop new shit. And I got nothing more to say. So until next time I take my leave. Granddaughter. The Carter Five. Not... Not your shining moment, Wayne. Not not the closeout we was hoping for, but you know what? I mean, shit happens. Like, it took forever to drop the shit. It wasn't all your fault, but I mean...
hopefully we get another one out of you because this one right here just just wasn't it it just not was it but it's all good it is what it is i'm out of here